Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be making a compound called lithium peroxide. And my friend Sam is here, and <laughs> <laughs> and that's Kate. <laughs> Anyhow, we have a science project to do, and it's about the carbon cycle. And lithium peroxide is interesting because it will absorb carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and release oxygen. Kind of similar to how trees do it, except it's a chemical process instead of a biological process. Anyhow, so today we're going to be making some, and then this is for science class. Anyhow. So, we just need a few things. Lithium metal, that can be obtained from lithium ion batteries, and I showed you to do that. And uh, you'll also need some hydrogen peroxide. This is 35%. However, you can buy 3% in the store and concentrate it. That particular stuff is actually from Korea. Uh, you can find it, if you live in Korea, it's almost in any pharmacy, 35%. You can get 250 milliliters for 50 cents. If not in Canada, you can buy 30% concentration at the health food store or something. Anyhow. So, we're going to first go ahead and weigh out about 5 grams of our lithium metal. Make sure you dry off any mineral oil if it is stored under mineral oil. So we'll be back when we've done that. Okay, so we've actually used 4 grams of lithium instead of 5 because it actually takes quite a bit, as you can see right here. It's quite a bit of lithium metal and we don't want to use it all. Anyhow, so we're just going to add some normal distilled water to it. So Sam here is going to add a bit. And uh, keep adding more, more... Okay, that's probably good, you can stop there. And you can see a violent reaction occurs, and it should be very flammable. Or not. Typical hydro... I wonder why it's not flaming. The reaction produces large amounts of hydrogen gas, but for some reason it's not flammable. And yeah, so we're going to let this uh, go ahead and react until it's all reacted. We need all this lithium metal reacted with the water. It's really working. Ooh, it is working. Ooh, it's we can set it on fire. Okay. Oh, I did it! It blew up a little bit. In. Where's your zoom? I think. Oh, you'd be boiling it down. That's a nice pan. I don't care. Okay, so as soon as we've reacted all of the lithium with the water, we're left with a bunch of lithium hydroxide. And a bit of it is in suspension. So the first thing we're going to have to do is boil it down before we go any further. So we just have it on this uh, burner here on top of a pan, and we're just going to heat this up until all of the water's gone. We have to make sure all the water's boiled off. And then I'll meet you back. It's not happening. Hello, Kate. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, hi, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today we have some boiling milk <laughs> we're making today. So yeah, basically added some stuff together. Wait, what are you doing? <laughs> Mocking you. <laughs> Just Okay, so after boiling down the solution, we're left with approximately 18 grams of our lithium um, hydroxide here. Now, it's extremely nice and white, so it's nice and pure and everything. And we might have lost a little bit, but it approximately gained four times its weight in oxygen as we started out with approximately four grams of lithium. So, uh, that's a pretty good result. Um, anyhow, so we have plenty of lithium hydroxide to work with. And um, to figure out how much hydrogen peroxide we need, we're going to be adding an excess of hydrogen peroxide, but if you multiply it by approximately 2.5, um, then that's going to be how many milliliters of hydrogen peroxide you're going to need. So we'll take 18 and multiply it by 2.5, which is going to be like uh, 36, so 45, gram, or 45 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide is what we're going to need. So, I'm going to go ahead, pour this um, lithium hydroxide into this little condiment cup, and um, then measure out um, uh, 45 milliliters of concentrated 35% hydrogen peroxide into this beaker, and then I'll meet you back. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so be careful to be extremely cautious when using 35% um, hydrogen peroxide, as it will easily dissolve your skin, and it won't feel very good, and it does it very rapidly. Anyhow, so next we're going to just slowly add in our lithium hydroxide into the beaker, nice and slowly, a bit faster than what I did of course, but um, I'll do it off camera, and uh, we'll be stirring occasionally. This is going to form lithium hydroperoxide, which can then be de de decomposed into a lithium peroxide. So I'm going to go ahead and add this uh, bit by bit, and stir it around to make sure everything mixes well. And I'll meet you when that, back when that's been done. Now we added in excess just because that hydrogen peroxide, when heated up, will decompose into oxygen gas rather readily. Um, and this reaction can be exothermic, and so we just wanted to make sure we had enough hydrogen peroxide to react with everything. Anyhow, so I'll meet you back when I've added everything and stirred it around really well. Okay, so I've been stirring around with this uh, old screw here, and our solution has actually gotten quite warm to the touch. It's uh, probably about 30 degrees Celsius or so, 
and um, maybe even 40 degrees Celsius and most of everything's reacting you can see there's a bit of foam on top um, but I can feel some very large chunks of uh, lithium hydroxide still in there and those were the ones that just didn't get crushed up. I might recommend do, um, crushing with mortar and pestle or a coffee grinder or something before doing this. Um, except that the only problem is is that the powders, if you breathe them in, will react with uh, or will dissolve in the moisture in your lungs and your airway and everything, creating a caustic environment and dissolving your flesh inside you, which would be painful. And it would definitely hurt your nose if you uh, inhaled it through your nose. So you got to be careful if you are going to do that. Anyhow, but there's a simple way to speed up the reaction, which is, of course, to heat it up. And this also has the added benefit of decomposing any leftover hydrogen peroxide. Because we don't really want any excess hydrogen peroxide. So we're going to heat this up to just below the boiling point of water, um, which is about 100 degrees Celsius, 90 to 100 degrees Celsius. This will decompose the um, uh, hydrogen peroxide into water and release oxygen gas and hopefully finish reacting with it, any of the hydroxide we have left. Anyhow. So, we're going to go ahead and set this on the hot plate and get it um, heating up. And uh, make sure you install a thermometer or something to monitor the temperature. Um, so I'll meet you back as soon as i got that all set up. Okay, so it is very important that as soon as our solution has been brought to a boil, that we immediately take it off the heat and um, stick it in a filter. Now this is just a simple coffee filter in a canning jar, and we're just filtering off our solution to obtain the lithium hydrogen hydroperoxide. And... Um, it's important that you heat the solution to boiling point because, of course, it decomposes your um, excess uh, hydrogen peroxide, but it will also, any um, uh, lithium hydroxide which did not react, will dissolve into the water which is formed and be filtered as a solution. This is a reason um, to filter it while it's still hot so that all the lithium hydroxide is washed out and we're left with a nice pure product. Now, um, a, it can be rinsed just a little bit with some very hot water, um, just not too much, just a small amount, um, because it appears that my, I noticed that when I poured out the hydrogen peroxide, the stuff from Korea does must contain some sort of impurity because it was yellow, but um, that shouldn't be too much of a issue because, as you see, we've leached most of the yellow stuff out in the bottom, and our solution or our crystals are up on top are quite actually white. Anyhow, so when this is done filtering, we can take off our crystals and um, let them set out to dry. So um, I'll go ahead and do that and meet you back when our crystals are nice and dry. So I just wanted to quickly point out that our yield isn't going to be extremely amazing by any means because we are losing a lot of our product through this um, washing process. Because it, I don't know if you can see, but there are definitely crystals down at the bottom there. As the solution down here cools, lithium hydroperoxide is precipitating out. However, it will be contaminated with lithium hydroxide and will be rather difficult to separate and I don't want to try to recover that and risk um, having impurities in there. So I'll just be using the top stuff. Also in our beaker we still have a fair amount of um, the hydroperoxide and um, there's still some lithium hydroxide um, from the original reaction over in that measuring cup. So our um, results aren't going to be amazing by any means but we'll have a proof of concept that we did it. And these crystals up here are quite pure and we do want a fairly pure product as a result. Anyhow, so as I mentioned before, I'll go ahead, uh, finish the filtration, and then let these crystals dry out. Okay, so it's the next morning, and I just put it on a coffee filter and let it out on some paper towel to dry. The paper towel absorbed most of the water, and it's still rather wet, but that's okay. Uh, don't dry it in the oven, because then you'll start to decompose your product, and um, we kind of want to do that uh, in a setup similar to this. Because it decomposes into hydrogen peroxide and also some water, so um, that... Uh, it must be done under a vacuum, um, and hydrogen peroxide can be explosive at um, higher temperatures when it's in a concentrated form, so we have to be careful. But right here is my vacuum pump, which is just a refrigerator compressor. I got that out of the uh, side of a fridge, and you could probably go find one, and it's just attached to our uh, distillation apparatus. Now everything here has been greased with um, a high boiling point oil, um, so that we will be able to contain the vacuum and have no leaks, hopefully. Um, I haven't turned on the condensing column yet and run water through it, but I'll do that shortly. And we're just going to be heating this flask here. Um, and then I opted for a condenser column um, instead of just heating it through vacuum and sucking off the vapors because um, we don't want our vapors going into our vacuum pump. And I don't have a cold finger with liquid nitrogen to remove any um, gases coming into the vacuum pump. And I also don't have a uh, aspirator vacuum pump, which is one that... Um, uses the Venturi effect to create a vacuum by uh, high pressure water 
flowing across an air gap. Um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, but I don't have either of those, so I used a distillation apparatus because hopefully we'll be able to condense a majority of our vapors and do minimal damage to our uh, vacuum pump here. Anyhow, so I'll go ahead and turn on heating, uh, fill up the um, condenser column, turn on the vacuum, and we'll see what happens. And I'll meet you back if anything else changes. You have to remember that this must be done under vacuum because concentrated hydrogen peroxide fumes can come over and if hydrogen peroxide boils at normal atmospheric pressure and temperature um, then it will um, go ahead and explode. Um, if we're concentrating hydrogen peroxide it always must be done under a vacuum and we're kind of concentrating the hydrogen peroxide here but um, that wasn't our main goal. Anyhow, so we'll go ahead and start things going. Okay, so everything is now under vacuum. We have a perfect vacuum pulled on this and our condenser columns running and we're starting to heat up our oil bath. Now I just wanted to point out that um, last night after we did that filtration, um, a lot of crystals did precipitate out and the majority of this should actually be our uh, potassium hydroperoxide or sodium hy or lithium hydroperoxide because um, all we really reacted was the hydrogen peroxide with the lithium hydroxide which simply generated uh, lithium hydroperoxide and water. So, by boiling this down, we should be left with a much more impure but still usable lithium hydroperoxide. So, th the stuff in the vacuum uh, distillation apparatus right now is very pure, but we could boil this down and then use this as an impure source um, and then once again decompose it and get impure lithium, hydro or lithium peroxide. And I might do that because I don't really want to waste all of this. So, we'll go ahead and boil this down, and after this run has been done, I'll just add that in with it. We'll take that out, but then add it into our apparatus and do the exact same decomposition reaction. Um, it is important that you boil down all the hydrogen peroxide first so that you get minimal fumes of hydrogen peroxide coming over. Anyhow, so I'll meet you back if anything actually interesting happens. Okay, so I added in a thermometer to monitor the temperature of our reaction in there, um, in the oil bath, mainly the temperature of that. But um, besides that, you can see that we're starting to get some condensate um, condensing on the walls of our thing. And um, our thermometer reads just above 20 degrees Celsius, and at these temperatures, it's probably most likely something like water coming over, uh, but it may be mixed with a bit of hydrogen peroxide. Anyhow, nonetheless, this, we're just going to count everything that comes over as dilute, some sort of concentration hydrogen peroxide, which we can save and use in future applications, um, which will just require uh, un impure um, hydrogen peroxide. Anyhow, so we'll go ahead and wait till everything comes over and then just let this heat for about half an hour to make sure that everything decomposed. Um, anyhow, so I'll meet you back when that's been done. Okay, so it has been exactly one hour and I've come back and looked at it and it looks pretty good. And uh, we did collect a fair amount of distillate which came over dub just above 20 degrees Celsius. Um, and it stayed around there mostly the whole time, and I'm hoping that some of it's hydrogen peroxide, but if it's not, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go ahead, disassemble the apparatus, turn off the vacuum, and very quickly we must take our lithium peroxide and put it in an airtight container. Now, try to avoid breathing on it, which sounds kind of stupid, but you exhale a fair amount of carbon dioxide, and we do not want to uh, start converting our lithium uh, peroxide into lithium carbonate and having it release oxygen. So as soon as possible, we need to get it out of that container into an airtight container and avoid breathing on it. That's our number one priority, then we can deal with everything else. So I'm going to quickly do that, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so you can see that we've transferred all of our nice lithium peroxide to this bottle, and we will be making um, more with that other stuff, but it won't bore you with that. And we'll be testing out this in a moment to see that we actually have lithium peroxide. Now, another thing is that um, this here is our distillate which we collected, which maybe contains hydrogen peroxide. Uh, we can It's not very much, so I'm not going to save it, so we might as well just test it out. So here, I have some manganese dioxide. You can buy this um, from pottery store as a pigment in pottery and stuff, and uh, it catalyzes the um, decomposition of hydrogen peroxide very readily, releasing huge amounts of oxygen gas. So if we do have any hydrogen peroxide here, it will be decomposed by this uh, manganese dioxide. Let's see. Well, it doesn't appear that very much happens, so I'm going to say that we didn't actually make any hydrogen peroxide. Most of it must have decomposed um, upon heating into oxygen gas and um, water already, so we just have water there. Uh, but that's still kind of interesting. 
So now I'll move on and set up and see if we can figure out um, if this is indeed um, lithium peroxide or not. So we'll go set up a rig for that and uh, we'll look at that in a moment. Okay, so we checked online for a few different properties of um, lithium carbonate versus the lithium peroxide. Now lithium peroxide slowly decomposes into oxygen and lithium hydroxide um, when added to water. And what I mean by slowly is it dissolves fairly quickly but it's not a vigorous reaction by any means. Um, so I have here two canning jars, each with a fairly equal amount of water, just a bit, and um, then we have some baking or uh, some vinegar here, which is acetic acid, and some baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate. Now, um, so first we're going to add a bit um, to some water um, in the one canning jar, just the lithium peroxide, and it should fully dissolve and create a solution. However, lithium carbonate is much less soluble in water, so we should be able to note that not all of it will dissolve after we take a bit of it, put it in a spoon or something, and put it over a carbon dioxide generator as we add baking soda and vinegar together. The lithium um, peroxide should then hopefully absorb our carbon dioxide, forming lithium carbonate and releasing oxygen, um, which is what it's designed for in use of uh, carbon dioxide scrubbers. So, the first thing we'll do is we're going to move these aside. We'll take our first bit, and we'll open this up, and pour a little bit in. And I can see some small little bubbles forming um, as it slowly reacts, but um, I'll just swirl this around a bit and let everything dissolve. And I'll meet you back in a moment. Okay, so about a minute later, everything appears to have dissolved. And we could test to see if it is indeed lithium hydroxide, and it is, by uh, putting a piece of litmus paper in uh, to test the pH. And it turned blue, which means it's very basic. So we clearly have lithium hydroxide in solution, and there were some small bubbles of oxygen coming off. So I can pretty sure, I'm pretty sure we can confirm it's lithium hydroxide. Now, to show that, that it definitely is, we're going to make a carbon dioxide generator. Now, we don't want this to degrade all, so we're going to pour it out first before we start the generator. So we're going to pour some into our little thing there, seal our container up, and... Um, now we can start to generate carbon dioxide gas. So to do so, we're just going to, of course, put baking soda in the vinegar and let this kind of sit over top. Now, currently, we're generating huge amounts of carbon dioxide gas by the reaction of acetic acid and sodium bicarbonate, forming sodium acetate and carbon dioxide and water. So this is then absorbed by our, hopefully, lithium uh, peroxide here, forming lithium carbonate and oxygen gas. We'll add in some more of that, and we'll just let this go for a bit to make sure that it absorbs a fair amount. Um, after that, we'll see how soluble it is in water. So give me a moment. Okay, so now that that's done, we can take what we've got, which is hopefully our lithium carbonate. Some of those bigger chunks might still be some lithium peroxide, just because um, they're not ground up finely, and it might have only reacted with the surface. But uh, we'll basically take another thing of water and dump it all in. And it doesn't look very soluble. I mean can't see very ma many bubbles. There might be a few bubbles I can see, and that might just because of, be of the larger chunks, but mostly it's remaining insoluble. I mean, yeah, even those fine powder pieces are just in suspension. I mean, um, so I'll let that sit for, let's say, five minutes or so, and see if any of it dissolved. Okay, so approximately five minutes later, you can see we're still left with a fair amount at the bottom. Now, lithium carbonate is slightly soluble in water, so a bit would dissolve, but you can tell it's a much greater difference than before, as before, everything dissolved in the water and released um, a bit of oxygen gas. This stuff isn't really doing anything. It's just sitting there. A bit of it might dissolved into solu might a bit might have dissolved into solution, but clearly most of it is very insoluble, and it has been about five minutes. Anyhow, so that's basically how to make lithium peroxide, which uh, is very useful and very interesting because it acts sort of how trees act by um, absorbing, or well, taking in carbon dioxide and uh, releasing oxygen. Except that this is, of course, a chemical um, process and not a biological process as trees do. But, um, yeah, anyhow, so that's lithium hydroxide. There's not, or peroxide, there's not too much use of it. Um, but I will save it for future applications if we ever need it. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed. Oi, bye.